Do you want to catch more fish on the beach in November? Well, keep watching because this is what this video is all about. I'm going to give you all of the information from what fish to target, from what bait and rigs to use, all of that coming up in this next video. So keep watching. If you're new to my channel, my name is Kathy Sanders and I'm a beach fishing guide here in Northeast Florida. I'm also the founder and owner of Fishing Girl. We've got branded products, we've got our fishing charters, and we have a ladies fishing group on Facebook that's going on almost 4,000 members now. So if you're a woman and you love to fish, go check out Facebook, look up in the groups, Fishing Girl Women's Fishing Club, and join us. For this video, I've packed years of knowledge and footage and videos from past Novembers so you'll know what fish to target, what baits and rigs to use. We're going to talk about the tropics and how those storms can affect fishing before, during, and after the storm. And keep watching to the end of the video because I've got some pro tips like how I like to use fish gum. Also, I'm going to give you some of my best tips about pompano fishing that's going to explain why you're not catching pompano and how you can make sure that you stay hooked on them from the beach in the future. So if you want to catch more fish in November from the beach, keep watching. We've got a ton of information for you in this video. And if you're wondering why I'm like all wet, it's because just before I was getting ready to film, I'm out here on the beach, I got four lines out. If you see me looking over, it's because I'm watching my lines. We just got doused with a downpour of rain. Thankfully there was no thunder, so I just stayed and thought, well, we're going to keep filming after. Here in Florida, and it doesn't matter if you're in Northeast Florida or a different part of Florida, November fishing on the beach can be really tricky because for one reason, we are really not out of hurricane season yet. The hurricane season ends November 30th, so we have the possibility of continued storms. I don't know if you can see from the beach behind me, but we've got a ton of seaweed on the beach already from Hurricane Milton, and that was about two weeks ago that that happened, maybe two and a half now that Milton came through and we are still dealing with cleanup on our beaches and we weren't even the worst hit. There's some areas that are still dealing with a lot. We'll get into that in just a minute. So November is usually gonna bring a cool down in our water temperatures, which is gonna result in more species of fish running on the beach. So typically at the end of October, beginning of November, we're looking at like water temperatures of between 73 to 75 degrees. And that's going to be perfect temperature for some of these target fish that we're going to talk about in just a minute. Up until a few weeks ago, we were sitting at like 80 to 83 degrees all up and down the coast here. The water was very warm still, unseasonably warm. But since Milton came through, we saw like a 10 degree drop in the water temperature. And that was pretty significant for just a short period of time. But November can be a super fun month for surf fishing. So let's get into this video and talk about all of these fish that you can catch from the beach in November. Let's talk about what fish you should be targeting in November. So in November, we're going to carry on redfish. We're still going to see redfish in the water. We're going to see bluefish. I was already catching bluefish today. We've started seeing them coming back in October and they're going to come back even stronger in November. We're also going to see whiting. That's one of the main species I've been catching today. But I'm also going to throw in another one. I'm going to continue pompano into this category because it's really going to depend on the water temperature. If you haven't had a chance to watch my video about fish migration patterns and water temperatures, I'm going to put a link to that in the description of the video and it will be at the end of the video. You can click on that and watch it next. But I, I go through all the major fish and ones that you're going to want to target from the beach and I talk about the main water temperatures you're going to find them at and the months that you're going to basically be seeing them in here in northeast Florida and Pompano is one of those. We're in that water temperature now especially since it's dropped. I'm watching my lines because they're moving. Typically right now Pompano are heading further south. In past years we've not really been catching them much in November because the water was already getting too cold for them they had moved on further south in their migration pattern. But this year, because we have had such warm water up until just a couple of weeks ago, like I mentioned with Milton, we have not seen pompano coming through here real strong. I've seen reports just in the last few days of people catching some nice keeper pompano up further north of us, kind of near Jacksonville. So it appears as though some of them are starting to head back our way. Uh, South Florida has really been catching pompano all this whole summer. 
but there are residential pompano that stay in an area and they don't leave and they don't migrate they just stay so some of those people are catching those residential pompano our october has been a little weird september and october it feels like we've been preparing for storm after storm after storm. So there was hurricane barrel that came and affected some areas, but it didn't really affect our area too much. Then we had hurricane Helene, which surprisingly did affect our area a little bit. We did have some strong winds. We had uh, some storm surge a little bit. And then Milton came through. And even though it hit and made landfall on the west coast and it came across uh, south of us, I think I got a hit. <laughs> Those winds, kind of the circulating winds, were pushing right into our coast and causing a lot of storm surge damage. We we're getting a lot of seaweed even a week and a half after. We're going to get into that more, a little bit more later in the video. But before Hurricane Milton, our water temperatures were so warm that they just weren't coming back yet. The, the Pompano, it wasn't the right temperature for them. So they did not come back yet to the beaches here in Northeast Florida. So I'm guessing either one of two things happened. Either the water temperature was still too warm for them to return, or either the storms and all the drastic changes and the dirty water and every, all, everything being so turbulent caused them to skip over our area entirely. I'm really hoping it's the first one because I'm still waiting for our pompano run here. And hopefully it's gonna be hitting here in November. With those target fish, Last month I talked extensively about redfish. So if you're wanting to target redfish, when you're done with this video, go back and watch October's beach fishing tips video. I think you're gonna get a lot of helpful stuff out of that. Along with those other fish that I mentioned, it doesn't mean that's the only fish you're gonna catch in November. In past Novembers, I was also catching black drum. I was catching a lot of sharks, uh, lots of little bait fish, which are great. Some of them are good to eat. Some of them are great for bait for the sharks and for the bluefish and for the redfish and everything. So don't just think if you're only catching small fish, you can hook those up and throw them back out for something bigger. But on underwater footage, we were also seeing sheep's head really close to the shore. We were also seeing some big stingrays. So there's a lot of fish out there running the beach in November. So you want to be going after those target fish and all the other fish that are out there too. If you're finding this information helpful, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, push the like. While you're doing that, I'm gonna go reel in this fish. Here we got another whiting. This guy is, uh, could be some small fillets, but he bit on the sand flea that we just hooked up with that fish gum. So, awesome. Let's talk about what bait you're gonna use for November beach fishing. So last month, our main bait we were using was mullet because we were targeting redfish. This month, you're not gonna see as many mullet running in the surf as you did in October and into September even. And even if you did see mullet running, the surf is typically gonna be a little more rough in the November, so it's gonna be hard to try to cast net them. If you can get mullet frozen from a tackle shop, that's going to be excellent bait for the bluefish. Or if you catch a whiting, you can cut that up into pieces. It's a smaller bait fish that we talked about. Those bluefish will be all over those. As usual on the beach, sand fleas and shrimp are prime baits to be using. So uh, a little tip that I have, and I wasn't going to share this till another video. I'll share it more extensively in the future. But if you're having trouble finding sand fleas, my biggest tip is to find where the waves cross each other when they're going back out and that is the spot you want to rake as the waves are washing out rake backward through that that little run out that's kind of where you can see a little run out is where the waves cross each other another tip but if you rake there you may find one or two but that's more than none this year i haven't had any problem locating sand fleas here at barn park we have like just all up and down the beach i can see colony after colony after colony I can catch as many sand fleas as I want. They're just by the thousands right here. But if you don't have a sand flea rake, one thing that you can do, go to one of these spots here where you see all that disturbance and you know there's a bunch of sand fleas. After the water washes out, scoop up with both hands. You'll feel them moving in and squirming around in there. Bring that sand up higher than where the water is coming up and then just like dump the sand out and then kind of sift through it with your hands because they like to play dead. There might be a, like seven or eight of them in there. You only see one or two to begin with because the other ones are still hiding in the sand or they're playing dead. So that's a good way to find sand fleas if you don't have a rake, because I know not everybody 
coming out to the beach, if you're just coming on vacation, you don't want to have to buy all the equipment. You're just bringing your pole that maybe you use for catfishing or whatever. Um, and that's fine, but this is a way that you can find the sand fleas and collect them without having to have a rake. Synthetic baits are always a must have. I always have fish bites and fish gum, mostly fish gum, but I still have some flavors of fish bites that work better on some beaches under certain, certain circumstances. For instance, the beach that I'm on right now, uh, you can probably see there's a lot of broken shells here. And another little tip is you see a lot of broken shells like this. It's not because the water is breaking them open. It's because the fish are eating the clams inside of them. They're from the little donut clams that burrow themselves into the sand. So the fish are eating the clams and then the shells are just scattered. They wash up. I think I might have another fish. <laughs> So there's uh, purple clam fish bites that I like to use. The periwinkle clam, I guess, is the original name for it. I particularly like to use that one on this beach because it mimics the color of this um, of these shells, and so that can be really effective on a beach like this. I'm gonna go check my line. You guys, hang tight. I'll be right back. All right, we've got another palometta on the line here. This one's a little bit bigger than the other two that I caught. These are also in the Jack family, like Pompano. But you can tell that they are Palometta. They look a lot like Permit. It's not a Pompano and it's not a Permit. It's got these vertical lines here. We call them grill marks. And then these fins here are longer. So beautiful little fish. I like to always have my salted shrimp. I think the reason salted shrimp is doing so well today, we got shrimp boats out here. So there's more of an abundance of shrimp in the water right now. That's that's what that tells me. If they're, if they're fishing for shrimp, there's shrimp in the water and that's what the fish are also eating. It's a natural bait for them. So that is working well today, along with the sand fleas. So this month I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the difference between fish bites and fish gum. Because I have a lot of people who ask me who don't do like a lot of beach fishing. They're not from the area here, so they don't really know anything about fish bites or fish gum. What is it? Why do we use it? So both of them are synthetic baits. Fish bites is completely synthetic. There's nothing natural in there at all. They have many different scents, many different color combinations. You can get the shrimp flavor in just about any color that you want. And the colors are to match the, the water clarity. You know, pink if it's clear, greens and yellows if it's uh, dirty water. So they have a lot of good opportunities, a lot of good baits, and they can be really good if you don't have time to stop at the tackle shop or maybe the tackle shop's not open yet. You can grab a synthetic bait. Um, I, lately, I've been using a lot more fish gum. I found it more productive for me personally. If you're finding a certain bait to be more useful for yourself and for your own fishing, then by all means, use that bait. Don't let what other people are saying to you or trying to pressure you with what bait you should use uh, dictate what you use. Because if something's working for you, use it. Let's talk about fish gum. Fish gum is not completely synthetic. It has got some natural baits in there and I'm getting another bite. I just let two go. I let a blue fish go earlier, so what's that, nine fish today already? And I'm not even really paying attention to my lines. The old way that fish gum was made would dissolve really quickly, and now that he has improved his formula and made this next generation of bait, it's been working really, really well for us. Fish are really jumping almost out of the bucket. Make sure you watch through to the end of the video because on the pro tips, I'm going to show you how I like to cut these up 
and what type of rigs and situations. There's different ways that I cut them up for our float rigs. There's different ways that I cut them up for our regular pompano rigs. So watch to the end to see those tips too. Now we're gonna talk about rigs for beach fishing. And I don't wanna take long on these. Last month's video, I showed you, I took them out of the packages and I showed you, here's our float rigs. I hand tie these. I make them to order for, for every order. And then here is our rigs from Frisky Fins. These have both have been working really well. I've been using just our pompano rigs and one of them has our float rig, but the pompano rigs, the silver rig has been catching a lot of fish today. We love that silver rig. Here's a rig that I have not talked about really much yet in other videos. We kind of alluded to a fish finder rig or a Carolina rig um, for redfish. This is a shark fishing rig. So these are made by Red, Redfin Fishing. And uh, he does a great job putting these together. They're expensive, but there's a lot of tackle that goes into these. So for the typical shark fishing rig, this is 300 pound mono, I believe is what he said. Look at the size of these. The tackle on here is, is awesome. And then you're gonna put your, your sinker right here and it can move freely on the line. That's about a three foot line, and then you've got about a one foot leader that is a cabled leader, and it's coated too. So this isn't gonna rust like the metal ones that aren't coated. And then this is a really big hook for a really big fish. You're gonna put really big bait on it, but shark fishing is a lot of fun. Just make sure that you've got your shark fishing license. It's free. If you're in Florida and you've got a, even if you don't live in Florida, you can still take the shark fishing course it's free. It's a couple hours of training of how to handle sharks and shark identification. It's actually a really great video um, course to watch, to go through. I would, I would suggest it even if you don't care to catch sharks. It's a very informational. It's good to know because if you're fishing out here on the beach for any period of time, you will catch sharks. And you're going to want to know how to handle them. You're going to want to know how to identify them. So I would highly suggest, I'm going to put the link in the video description for that shark fishing course and also for um, redfin fishing for his shark fishing rigs he's got a lot of good rigs and i highly suggest them two other rigs i want to talk about one is a carolina or fish finder rig this is going to have the sinker and then the the, the hook and the bait coming off of that. not like a pompano rig that has the weight at the end you have the weight before the hook and that allows the bait to flow freely the fish finder rig is going to have a movable spot for the sinker so that it will stay there because sometimes fish will spook if uh, bigger fish like redfish and things they might drop the bait if they feel any tension so that allows you to catch the fish and not uh not lose it because it spooks away. Here is also a mortician rig. This is a 60 pound main line and I've got 20 or 40 pound drops coming off of it to a snelled hook. These are a little bit bigger hooks because we're targeting those bigger the fish with the bigger mouths, the blue fish, things like that. So mortician rig, this also has the, the sinker at the bottom like it does with the pompano rig. But the main difference is you've got the stronger main line so that if the fish bites off the hook, they're not biting off all of your tackle too. And that you don't lose your sinker if they bite a hook off. So smaller sharks and bluefish, if you have a mortician rig, I would highly suggest you use that. Next, we're gonna talk about tropical storms and November beach fishing. So with all of these storms that we've had, Hurricane Milton, Hurricane Helene, it's easy to want to get right back out on the beach and start fishing right away because we've had all of our fishing time in October seems like it was preparing for storms or cleaning up after storms or bunkering down and you know not able to fish. I know some of you on the west coast of Florida are still dealing with all the cleanup and all of the devastation and damage. Um, even inshore there's areas that are still like trying to recover from massive flooding. So just know that our prayers are with you guys. We've been praying for everyone that's been affected by these storms that you'll be able to uh, get all of that restored quickly. I think I mentioned it earlier in the video. Keep in mind that hurricane season doesn't end until November 30th. We still have time before this tropical season ends 
and honestly there is a spot that they are watching in the tropics that could develop we won't know more until next week but if you watch mike's weather page i watch you know at least his little short he put, put at least a short video out every day that kind of gives you a quick update in uh, youtube shorts just to kind of give you in a nutshell what his earlier video talks about in detail but if you're able to watch that it kind of goes over shows you how things are developing helps you get ready before things get too far in development so you kind of know what could happen back in 2022 i'm going to play some of this video over while i'm talking hurricane nicole made landfall on november 10th and it caused massive damage to all of our florida beaches if you look at the water temperature map right now you'll see that the gulf area is still pretty warm unseasonably warm and on the south side of florida you know, our waters here have cooled down a little bit, but they're still like in the 80s down in South Florida, which is still making it a breeding ground for these tropical storms, for these hurricane systems that develop. But until those temperature drops in the ocean, then we're still going to see possibilities of systems developing. So how do these storms affect fishing? When we know there's a hurricane coming, what's the first thing you do? You go to Costco. You go to Publix, you go to Walmart, you start stocking up your shelves, you start making sure that you have enough food in case the power goes out or something. Well, the fish do the same thing. When there's a storm coming, they start feeding intensely because they don't know, they just know something's coming. They don't know how long it's gonna last or anything. So they wanna be fully, have their stomachs full before that comes in. So that makes a really good opportunity before a storm comes for some beach fishing. So as long as you're paying attention to the forecast, pay attention because the hurricane may not come for a few days, but there's always those rain bands that come in ahead as it's swirling around. And those rain bands are gonna bring strong thunderstorms. They could bring tornadoes. So, you know, make sure you're staying safe. It might look fine now, but if the forecast says that you're in a tornado area, you might wanna stay inside. You might wanna stay home because they could turn just like that. Then during and after the storm, the fish are going into hiding. They are trying to stay safe. They're keeping themselves in a comfortable temperature. Things might be really turbulent. Like I'll overlay some of these videos of these 14 foot waves, 16 foot waves we were seeing with Hurricane Milton. Those fish are going into hiding. They're not gonna be out like they normally are, just having a good old time. They are gonna be looking out for themselves and staying safe. So fishing during the storm is not, it's not recommended, just don't do it. This might go without saying, but after the storm, if we have a strong storm like with Milton, like with Hurricane Nicole, there's gonna be some damage. There's gonna be some cleanup that has to happen. There may be beaches that are washed out. There may be uh, over, like, like crossovers that are completely closed. There may be areas that are not safe, so they get closed off. So. Stay on top of that. I, in this area, I try to go up and down the beaches and show you what the beaches look like after every storm. So that's another reason to be subscribed because I'll do that whenever we have major damage. I'll put out a video showing you what to expect before you come to the beach. There might be roads flooded out. There might be crossovers that you can't access anymore. And so it's really important to know, to be aware of that so that you're not stuck in a situation. Have a plan B or even a plan C. So if the first place you're going to is closed and you can't access it, you've got another place that you can get to and uh, another place that you can go fishing. But beyond all this, as crazy as that all is, there's another thing we had after Hurricane Milton, a week and a half later, all of this seaweed started washing up. And here's a little overlay of a video from when I was out last week, last Monday. This was a week and a half after Milton made landfall and it had broken up all of the sargasm seaweed out in the ocean and washed it in. It took a week and a half for it to get here after the storm had, had made landfall. As you can see in that video, the sargasm seaweed was so bad, it was snapping my lines within minutes of casting. Just, it got so heavy that the lines were snapping right off as I was trying to reel them in. And I had to cancel those two charters that I had those two days because there was no way that I could fish in those conditions. Here's some strategy and some further tips for November. Like I mentioned throughout the video, pay attention to the water temperatures because that's really going to determine what fish you're going to be targeting. Like I said, we might have pompano coming through the area because 
uh, of the change in water temperatures and how long it took for it to cool down. Oh my gosh, I caught a sea turtle. <laughs> I wasn't trying to catch you, buddy. I know, oh, snap my line. Well, that was a sea turtle that got all my lines crossed, but it's starting to rain, so I need to get all my lines in. We're going to finish up this video in the car before I go home. So stay tuned. So now that we're in the car and all safe and dry, I can continue on with what I was going to say. As these storms have come through one other tip is that there's exposed rocks that weren't there before so one tip with that is those could be really good places to fish they could be really bad you want to make sure that you are looking at low tide to find out exactly where those rocks are so that you're not going to be throwing expensive tackle and sputniks and losing them if you know where they are then you can kind of fish around them but those can be really good areas to fish because they're going to attract fish like redfish like sheep's head like black drum like other fish that like to be around structures so you might catch some species that you've never caught before because you're fishing near those rocks and one last thing i want to mention is as we're coming into this season of being thankful and coming into thanksgiving Remember to be kind and helpful and supportive to other people on the beach and in the fishing groups that you're a part of. I know with our Women's Fishing Club on Facebook, our, our goal is that we're supportive and encouraging. And if we find negativity, if anybody's like being negative or like kind of like, oh, I caught that one that was bigger than yours type of attitude, you know, we try to address that because we're not there to show off that we got better fish than other people our whole goal is to encourage women encourage people to to go out and, and be fishing and and have fun with it unfortunately i'm in some groups where it's like i feel like i can't post sometimes if i didn't catch some amazing fish because i know that i'm going to get lots of comments on Oh, I caught this bigger one. Oh, you should have thrown that one back. It's not big enough. You shouldn't have to feel defensive of yourself because you didn't catch the biggest fish or you don't have your cooler overflowing with massive amounts of fish. And sometimes it feels that way in some of these groups. I don't care who you are or what you've accomplished, what you've done. It's just nice to be supportive of the other person. Who cares if you caught the other fish? They're really happy that they caught that fish. So just say, hey man, awesome job. That's a great fish. That goes a whole lot longer than, oh, I caught one bigger than you. So <laughs> just remember that to be kind and thankful this season. But now let's get to our pro tips. I'm gonna show you this fish gum and how I like to cut it, how I like to use it. We're gonna be using this rig that actually is one of our float rigs that I made, but it's got one float on and the other one was probably pulled off by a um, crab. So I have this Pompalicious fish gum here and what I'm gonna do is cut it. Cut it, now if I'm cutting this for a hook that does not have a float, I'll cut it either like in a piece about that big or I may even cut it like triangular. It just seems like sometimes that works better in a triangle like this. We haven't tried sand fleas yet, so I'll pull a sand flea on here so you're also gonna get how to hook a sand flea. So I'm gonna hook it through the tail. The underside with through the tail and out through the back. And then I'm gonna just put this piece on here like that. So you don't need a very big piece. And then with the float, what I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something very different. So I'm gonna find a really small sand flea. So you can't pack this hook out too much. So small sand flea hooking again through the tail as much as possible. I think I missed the tail that time, but that's all right. And what I do with the ones on the float hooks is different. So I'll, I'll cut a bigger piece and then I will either cut this up into four small triangles. See this, this bait lasts longer now. So, so now I have four pieces of bait from that one little square. 
and I'm going to take this little triangle. See, what I don't want to do, I don't want to pack this out too much. I also don't want this piece of fish gum to hide that sand flea. If it's too big of a piece, it's going to cover it. You're not going to be able to see it at all. So that right there, that is good. So those are the ways that I like to hook the, uh, the fish gum, and that is what I do. So for our second pro tip, this has something to do with the first one with about fish gum, but any synthetic bait that you put on your hook can rust it out if you're not taking it off. When you put your, your rigs back in the bag, you put it back, maybe you just like hook it onto a hook on your, on your pole and then just stick it in the garage. I've heard of people say that they left it a whole winter and then they come back to it and it's all like black. The biggest thing is that it's gonna rust your hook out and I have had hooks actually break off and I lost a fish, a good fish. I've lost a couple really good fish because I was too lazy to cut off the fish bites, to cut off the fish gum before I put the rig back in the bag. But those synthetic baits can really rush your hooks out. So before you leave the beach, as you're packing up, just cut them off the hook. It's gonna take you a whole like three seconds more to cut it off. So keep that in mind when you're at the beach. Take those synthetic baits off your hook so you don't lose fish down the road because it's rusted through. All right, our third pro tip is about pompano and how they hit. And as November is getting cooled down, we're really hoping the pompano schools are coming back through. So I don't want you to miss these fish when they come back to your area and when you're finally able to hook up on them. So here's something that you may not know about pompano, especially if you fish freshwater, if you fish inshore. I've spoken at other fishing groups and the guys would come up to me after the meeting and say, hey, that one tip you gave me, I realized I probably had pompano on the line many times and I didn't even realize it and I lost the fish because I didn't know this one thing that I'm getting ready to tell you about. So pompano are notorious for hitting Biting. They'll bite the float first, then they'll, they'll get on the bait, and then they will start swimming toward the shore. And I'm going to put a little video here of this baby pompano, underwater footage. This baby pompano hit on our go fish cam, and it started swimming toward the shore. And this tiny little fish dragged 10 ounces, <laughs> over 10 ounces of weight, all the way up to the beach, and I caught up with it at the shoreline. Got a little tiny pompano. Check this out, this was pretty cool. This little guy comes in, it's hard to see, but he gets hooked up on that second line back there, that second hook. He actually started running toward the shore and you'll see how small this thing is and I'm shocked that he was able to pull the camera and a five ounce Sputnik all the way up into the wash. So by the time, and I'm actually I pulled in part of the actual video from when I was fishing that day. I'm kind of letting this run because you used to see this is how far this little tiny pompano pulled all of the, the camera and the Sputnik and went right into shore. It's a good lesson to show you that pompano, they get hooked up and they will run toward the shore. That's why you see your line go slack. And now I've reeled it in and coming into the shore. And you can see that is not a big pompano at all. Oh yeah, it, it like swam all the way up to shore. This little baby pompano. So what that looks like is your line's gonna bend over and then it's gonna go slack because the fish is swimming toward you. So if you see your line slack and there's could be pompano in the area, you need to get to your line as soon as possible, pull it up, start reeling, keep that rod tip up, keep tension on the line because in, in, if anything, I see a lot of people walk toward the shore when they're reeling fish in. No, 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 no. You gotta walk backward. You gotta walk back. So you're pulling back and you're keeping that tension on the line. You're keeping that fish on the line because a lot of times when these pompano are hooked up, they are barely hooked. And so if you leave any spot of slack in the line after you've been reeling them in, after you've been pulling that hole and making it bigger, those fish are just gonna pop right off. And I've seen so many times the fish gets to the shoreline and people are not walking backwards. They lose the fish right in the wash. That is the easiest place to lose the fish. 
but the, the one thing that I want you to take away from this tip is if you see your line go slack, you get to that pole as soon as you can and start reeling all the slack up. Keep that tension on the line. Keep hold the tip up. Don't drop it because that is the number one way I can guarantee that you're losing pompano is because you're not knowing how to reel them in and you're not recognizing when you have them on the line. And one last thing that I just wanted to say, if you come this far, you can listen to this one more thing, is that I believe in supernatural miracles. I believe in the power of God. I'm a Christian, a born again Christian, and I know that God has a plan for your life. He loves you so much. And he has a specific plan and purpose for you that is like nothing else that nobody nobody else can do what he has gifted and designed and called you to do. So if you are a Christian and you don't know what that purpose is for your life, pray and ask God what that is that he wants you to do because I guarantee it's going to be something amazing. You're going to be living a dream if you start walking into that calling for your life. And if you don't know Jesus, if you don't know about him, he died on the cross, that he died to save your sins, then I just invite you to pray and ask him to forgive you of your sins because he loves you and he has a plan for your life and there is hope for you. There is hope for your life and for your future. So don't let anybody tell you that you're not worth anything because God loves you and he sees great value in your life. So I just wanted to add that today. Thank you so much for watching this November Beach Fishing Tips video. I hope that it helps you catch a whole bunch of fish. Go ahead and leave a, a comment in here if this has been helpful. If you came back and, and realized, oh yeah, that really helped me catch some fish, please leave a comment. I know I've said it already. We're gonna be doing a video like this every month of the year to help you catch more fish on the beach. So subscribe, hit that like, tight lines.